All right, I'm hanging out at uh, Lexington, Kentucky Airport waiting on Christopher. We're going to put that turbo on for good this weekend. But, uh, yeah, here's the observation area. You can just sit and watch the planes take off and land. And that's the airport over there. It's not a very big one. I believe that's Christopher's plane right there. Look at what we got him. I see him in the glare. He's coming around the corner. There he is. What are those? Ah. Ah, we're ready to do turbo stuff. You're on camera. What You're up? on camera. <laughs> What's up? Let's do some turbo stuff. Turbo stuff. All right, got Chris over here rebuilding the carburetor. And I'm gonna do these head studs. Again, I'm just gonna pull them out one at a time. Undo the bolt. Probably start in the middle here. So undo the bolt. And then uh, take the bolt and washer all the way off. And then put an Allen on the end of that. And pull them out, thread them out, loop them up real good, thread it back in, and retorque it down. And we'll do every one of them, especially on the top, because they leaking. They leaking. Now on a small block Chevy, all these go on a water jacket, every single one of them. Now on an LT1, these top four, a Gen 2 small block Chevy. They do not go in a water jacket. And on an LS, none of them go into a water jacket. So, there you go. Chris, having at it over here. Need another bit. That bit fit? No. Oh, man. That's all in one. Christopher's making progress. Yeah. And look at that. I pulled that metal stud out of there. And it ain't got no PTFE on it at all. Focus. I know I didn't forget to put that on there. I know I didn't. <laughs> I don't know. Oh well. They needed retorqued anyway. All right. Christopher got the carburetor rebuilt. We're gonna see what it do. He's up here taking the other one off. And I found something else on these studs. So these studs. If you tighten these all the way up and then back them off a quarter turn, the stud wiggles in the hole really bad. So I'm tightening the studs up all the way. I, I don't know on the LS motors, you, you tighten them all the way up and then you back them off about an eighth to a quarter turn. But I man, if you do that on these, I watched the video of me putting these on and I did put PTFE on all of them. And, um, I don't know, it, it all just came out. So I'm tightening them all the way down. They got like a little lip on the bolt that seals up against the head. So tightening the stud all the way up and then putting it back on, putting PTF, took it all out, put PTFE on it, put it back in. Now I'd tighten the stud up. Tight as, as far as it'll go. Not real tight, but you know, just snug like this. Maybe that'll help keep them from leaking. This side wasn't leaking, funny thing about it. I think that one was, but... I'm sorry. Christopher trying to knock the phone out of my hand. <laughs> she got them new deep wells I bought, man. <laughs> I asked you for a socket and you gave me a wrench. Are you, oh, did I really? It ah. is what it is. But, um, we came back through where I have to buy the 85 at. It's about a... 20 mile drive from here one way 40 mile round trip I forgot to take the gas jugs with me need a socket for sure. which I guess it wouldn't have mattered because those still got gas in them from this car that I got to put in the in the truck and yeah we're getting it I'll get you a socket well the 50cc accelerator pumps are heading so we're going to have to go get a spacer isn't a big deal. Probably should run a spacer anyway. I hear they help. 
So hopefully Advance has one. What do you think? I bet they do. I'm confident. Mm, carburetors. They're both 750s, but this one, man, just look at it. It's bigger. It's got the bigger pumps. It's got the bigger, whatever you call those, spring fork moment. <laughs> so we had to run to Winchester. Getting us some E85. My first time using the yellow handle. <laughs> and um, we had to come here because our local parts store didn't have a carpet spacer. But we had to come here anyway. Well, once we get the carburetor on, we're just going to stick the hose that went to the tank down in one of them jugs. See if it'll start up. I got to still finish the head studs, but put the valve covers on, put oil and water in it. But. All right, I got the head studs all done. Boy, that was that was time consuming. But um, I tightened them all the way up this time. Because if you barely even loose them, they wiggle a bunch, man. And it, 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 it cleaned off all that PTF sealer that was on them. It cleaned every bolt. It cleaned them all. So I put more on there and I tightened them all the way down this time. Chris has got the carburetor on. The carb spacer did clear the uh, 50cc pumps. And um, he took the uh, these out because these actually have center bolt valve covers. And um, these long bolts that he has over here, they don't clear the forward facing headers. So yeah. we're going to use the uh, center bolt valve covers. They came off the LT1 since it's got the holes for them. And these Pro Max heads, you, these Pro Max heads you can use either outside or center. So that's what we're going to do. But uh, we're going to pump some E85 out of it just because there's still regular gas stuck in between the regulator and the fuel pump, and there's still some in the lines that didn't all drain out. So what we're going to do is. Put a jug back there and just stick the line that went to the tank down in the E85 jug. <clears throat> and we're going to crank it over and pump it out. But I got to set the rockers first after Christopher gets done. Got anything to add, Chris? Should pump out while we're setting the rockers. And then. It could, yeah. We'll hook up to the carburetor. See if it runs on the E85. If it does, then change all the fuel lines. Press on. Switch out. I'm hoping it starts up and runs on E85. It's supposed to be an E85 carburetor. It's supposed to be an E85 carburetor. It looks like that it is. It was also supposed to come off a running car, too. And there ain't no way it was It was clogged up. Or maybe it come off a running car and he let it set with the 85 in. I don't know. It was dirty. But, uh, and one of these bolts for the fuel bowl was stripped out so we just tapped it to a quarter inch 20 and put a different bolt in it but uh there's a hell of pull pulled out of it or something i don't know but yeah hopefully it works y'all stay posted we're going to set the rockers put the valve covers on put the four facing headers on and then um see if it'll start all right so we had to grind these headers down a little at the bottom Clear them big old studs. This side's on. I grinded that side down. And Chris is putting it on. We put the center bolt valve covers on it. Clears good. See those ones? They'd hit right here. So I guess we could have just put a regular bolt down there, but <laughs> getting through that part to tighten that. Probably Probably could have used a socket with a swivel, but I don't know. I like the center bolt valve covers better. They're more rigid. And his were leaked. Well, his were crooked. They leaked. You had to tighten the crap out of them to keep them from leaking. What do you think about it, Chris? Looking good. We might be starting her in a minute with that carburetor. We bought it offline. We're not 100% sure it's an E85 carburetor or not. It's definitely blow through. It's got the blow through power valves in it. And, but you know, it's got the big boosters. It has the big 50cc. I mean, everything says Except E85. It's got small jets in it. It's got small jets in it. And I thought you needed bigger jets 
with the 85, but I don't know. We'll see. All right, we're just cranking it over and letting the 85 come up. It ain't come up yet because it's barely squirting out. Then we'll hook the line back up here and we'll try to start it. But the battery's dead, so it's kind of fighting us. <coughs> oh, I'm all flew down in our carburetor. And we're getting out. <laughs> he won't come out. See, we've had him right there twice. Oh, there, there he goes. goes. Yay. He's up there. All right, good deal. The <laughs> battery's fighting us, so Chris is going to try to manually fill the bowls. Because we only get about five or six good cranks before, before the battery goes dead again. I've got it on 100 amp start. That battery sucks. It's one of them AGMs or whatever. I don't like it. Look at that. Chris filled the bowls up and it started right up. Damn, what's oil pressure look like? It starts up in idles, man. With no settings. No settings at all. We just rebuilt the carburetor and threw it on there. I don't see no leaks. But we just did these one and a half turns out. We don't know what the FR is because we need our turbo. We need our turbo and our down pop. But by golly, it started. He filled the bowls up, and it first hit, it started right up. I said, shut it off. Let me do the camera. <laughs> yeah. And he did it again. So Got good pressure now. It means it's the 85 carbon, huh? Yeah, definitely wouldn't start on. It definitely wouldn't start if it was gasoline. I mean, it wouldn't start an idle like that. Fuck it, idle like it was already <laughs> set. I'm over here cussing up a storm. We got a... Um, so the next... I don't want to run it too long. There ain't no water in it. Plus it's, it's 11, 11 o'clock at, at night. We've been working on this since like 2 o'clock. Going through them head studs was a long, tedious process. And then that one boat. of the bolts was stripped out. And we had to run to the store. And we kind of live out in the middle of nowhere. So it's a little, little ways to the store. That does have a little leak right here. I thought I saw a drop. I don't know if it's that bolt. I don't know where it's going. It's either that or the bolt. More than likely it's the bolt in that washer. Yeah, I think we're getting a little drip right here. We are. It's coming from somewhere. More than likely that bolt because it was stripped out. We're going to have to find out a better washer for that. Find something better for that, and then we gotta set the set the fuel to where it's just coming out the float bowls. His other carburetor had the the views that we, you could see in, but can't see these, so we have to set the float bowls. But I mean, the squirters are working. I started right up, model man, crazy. But it is leaking right here, and it's probably that bolt that was stripped out. And we doubled up the gaskets there. Maybe maybe we should take one gasket out, Chris, and just try with one the one gasket. Maybe the doubled up gaskets is making it leak. I don't know. But it works. It freaking works. That was the biggest thing I was worried about, because we bought that used. Now I just hope the power valves are set right and come into boost right and everything like that. But we'll have to get the down pop and the wide bend on it. So tomorrow we're going to hang the turbo. And I guess Chris is going to mess with the fueling system. I got to work tomorrow's Friday. But um, It's like Christmas with parts over here. Yeah, we got all kinds of stuff to put on over there. All kinds of stuff. But yeah, I'm just happy. It started on E85, and it didn't just start, it started and idled. What do you think about that, Chris? I didn't expect it. I didn't expect that either. I thought we was going to have to fight with the carburetor. We didn't have to fight with it at all. Chris it rebuilt it. Hasn't ran in how long? <clears throat> I cleaned it, and Christopher rebuilt it. 
hasn't ran in like two weeks and it just started right up. He stuck me with the dang head studs. <laughs> I made an offer and you took it. Yeah. Yeah. We, I cleaned it. He he rebuilt it. You're going to have to put a rag down here, man. It's leaking pretty bad. It's all going to leak out. And we're going to have to put... We've doubled up the gaskets thinking that would help. Because we wasn't sure the bolt was going to... I don't know. Plus that bolt has like a locking thing on it. Maybe we need to go get a, a bolt that is flat on the back side of it. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. I don't know. We'll find the right bolt that'll work for that so that won't leak. It's holding pressure though. Yeah. I'm ecstatic. Yeah, hopefully tomorrow. Get the turbo ran, the oil drain. Chris found this little nifty thing that'll go right there where the uh, fuel pump's at that'll have a, a 10 a.m. fitting on it. Yeah. And then um, just we're going to come off the turbo and straight over to that for the drain. And then uh, we bought the kit to tap off that for the oil feed. Once we get the turbo hung, the oil feed, and the drain, we can run it more. But yeah, that'll be tomorrow, though.